Hey guys, it's Mr. G, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can modify your delete context script so that it lets you choose which one you want to delete when there's more than one with the same name. So I literally just went crazy for the last like hour thinking about this and trying to figure out a way to solve it. And let me show you guys what I was writing down. So this was my issue. Like if we have a contact list with three Jimbo's, Jimbo whose phone number is 123, a Jimbo whose phone number is 234, and a Jimbo whose phone number is 345. The issue is when I, have a mat when I do my matching contacts, when I create that list, it puts them all in order, 123. So I kind of lose the place that these original Jimbos have in contact list. So the way I went about doing this or solving this problem was I know that every Jimbo has a different phone number. So if I can identify the Jimbo by phone number, then I can just basically keep all the items in the list that don't have this phone number. Okay, so for example, if, I, if this is my contact list, and then I ask which Jimbo I want to delete, once I match all the Jimbos, if the person types in two, then I know that the Jimbo who, that I want to delete, their phone number is 234, and then I can go back to my contact list and just choose everything except the Jimbo that has that phone number. So this, is, this literally took me about an hour to figure out. I was like trying a lot of different things, trying a lot of different blocks. I actually started recording a previous video and I was at like 20 minutes just like randomly doing little things. Actually, I'll show you one of the things I did. I created a, let me move this down a little bit. I created a test list just to see if I could access the specific Jimbo that I wanted. And this actually worked. So what this does is it creates a test list called a, uh, well, it's just a list that has three names, Jimbo 1, Jimbo 2, Jimbo 3. And then when I asked which Jimbo would you like to delete, I was able to access the place, the index of the Jimbo that I wanted to delete. And it worked. Now, I didn't use the delete block in my other, in the actual thing. But let me just add a few more Jimbos, actually. Jimbo 666, 666. So there's, there are a bunch of Jimbos in here. And I'm going to show you guys that my code now works. And I'm going to walk you through what I did. Now, it looks really crazy because I haven't done any abstraction. I was just trying to get this thing working. So I'll show you what I did. So I created a script variable called one to be deleted. And I admit that might not be the best name, but it's the way that I was going to store the phone number or the Jimbo whose phone number I was going to delete. Okay, so what this does is first it asks, who do you want to delete from the contact list? and it waits. And I set the context to be deleted to answer. So if there's multiple ones, I have all those inside of this variable, context to be deleted. And then I set my matching context to a list that contains all of these uh, contacts to be deleted. If the list is empty, I say that there's no users with that name. If the list has, um, Actually, let me see. Yeah, if the list is empty, then that's, that's what should happen. But actually, I've got to drag this in here. Otherwise, uh, I should tell the user that the following contacts can be deleted. And I would say all the matching contacts that came up in that list that I created just with using the keep block over here. Okay? Now, if the length of the matching contacts is 1, so if the length of the list is one, that means there's only one name that matches that contact. So I don't have to worry about it. I just have to ask the person if they're, if they're sure that they want to delete it. And if they say yes, I can delete him. I can delete that item by setting the contact list to keep all of the items that don't match the name of that contact. Okay, so it's going to basically get rid of that one contact that the person wrote or identified. And... And that's it. <laughs> so if the length of the, of the context is one, otherwise, actually, I shouldn't even have this else. I had the else just because my code was a little different just before. So uh, honestly, if, if we reach, this else should probably go at the end of everything. That if, once it's done with, uh, actually, no, it's not going to go at the end of everything. I'm just going to get rid of it for now. And I'm just going to use an if block here. Let me just fix this up just a little bit. So if answer equals yes, then we're going to set our contact list to that. Great. Okay. So otherwise, if the person, if the person or if the list has met multiple contacts that match, then 
I gotta, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, which match do you want to delete? Because I'm going to show them um, all of the, because just before this, I showed them all of the matching contacts. So they saw a list of all the contacts that matched. And so all I gotta do is ask them to write down the number of the, of the match that they want to delete or the index of it. So keep in mind that all of these, all of these list items have an index, which is like the number in line that they're in or the place that they're in, almost like their place value. Um, so for example, this Jimbo is in place number seven, index seven. So what I do is I ask the user, when I ask the user which Jimbo or which person do you want to delete, which person do you want to delete, they're gonna tell me either one, two, or three, or whatever number of, uh, whatever the index is of the matching contacts. And once they do that, what I do is I set the one to be deleted, which was a script variable I declared early on. I'm going to set that equal to the phone number of the item of, so the, the phone number of the, the, the Jimbo that they chose um, and the, the place of that user. So I'm going to kind of like get the phone number from this line of code. So the cool thing is that I know that my contact list, every user has a different phone number. So once I have that phone number, all I'm doing here is storing a phone number. And then what I'm going to ask them is make sure that they're ready to delete the contact. And if they are, I am going to, oh, wait a second. I should not have gotten rid of that, okay, no one, that if else block before. Let me actually fix that again. I know I'm like all over the place here. But if the answer is yes, then, um, oops. Let me just put the set block in here. So if the answer is yes, we're going to just keep the items that they, uh, we're just going to keep the items that don't match and delete the ones that do. And down here, same thing. Uh, we're going to ask them what's the which one they want to delete. We're going to save the phone number of that user. And then when they say yes, that they want to delete that contact, it's going to set the contact list to every item except the one whose phone number matches the one to be deleted, which I set right over here. Okay, so this is the way I kind of like went about solving this problem. And if the person types in no or anything else, it's going to say, okay, no one was deleted. And that's going to be the end of the program. Now, as you guys can see, let me just add um, another user. Okay, so here's my list. There are seven items in the list right now. And let's see, one, two, three Jimbos. There's a Jimbo three, four, five, but let me delete that one first actually, just to show you guys that this deletes the one item by itself. So who do you want to delete from the contact list? I'm gonna say Jimbo three, four, five. The following contacts can be deleted. It's going to show me the list of all the Jimbos that can be deleted. And am I sure? When I hit yes, Jimbo345 is gone. Now let's do Jimbo. Okay, so I'm going to type in Jimbo, and now it's going to tell me all of the Jimbos that can be deleted. And I'm going to delete the one that's 333. Now that was really quick. That was kind of quick, so maybe I should like let it go on the screen for a little bit longer. Maybe depending on how long the list is, I should like you know change the amount of time it stays on. But I know that I want to delete the Jimbo 333 one, and I know that its place was two in matching contacts. So which match do you want to delete? Enter the index of the item, and I remember that that Jimbo was the second Jimbo. Okay, so I'm gonna hit oh, enter, and then it's gonna ask me if I'm sure I want to delete this contact. I'm gonna hit yes and it should delete the fourth item right here, this Jimbo 333. There we go, and it works. So it deleted my third Jimbo, or my second Jimbo out of the three that there were, and now the code works exactly as intended. It looks really crazy, and honestly, I should be abstracting some of this stuff that is could be reused. Like, are you sure you want to delete this contact? I asked that a couple of times. So I should really be like abstracting that and using a block that, you know, you know, double checks deletion or something, I can name it. And that is how you can figure this out. <laughs> so I hope that was really helpful. It actually took me like a pretty long time to figure this one out. Um, I'm sure there are more optimal ways. I was just trying to get it to work as quickly as possible because I have to leave for Long Island in like 15 minutes and I had just a limited amount of time to make videos. So 
Hopefully you guys were able to get something out of this or at least get an idea of one thing you can do. And if you figured out some other stuff, you can post it in the comments below. Um, or if you want to share your code, uh, you can do that and post your link to your code in the comments and I'll check it out because this was actually a lot of fun to figure out. And I'm sure some of you guys are going, going crazy uh, trying to do this one. If you find a bug in my code or a mistake, just let me know also because I, uh, I will fix it. And I haven't had much time to test it, but in the short amount of testing or short amount of time that I've done the testing or debugging, it seems to be working correctly. And I think my logic is okay. It's not optimal, but it is, it works. So we got something up and running. So I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys in lab two.